we bought a Keurig for the shop here. Oh yeah. And some espresso and some other stuff that came with it. We are going to be doing a series of videos while we are in quarantine here. Um, today is uh, just like any other day for us for the most part, except there's a lot of concern. So we are uh, working in the shop currently and not focusing too much on production time. We're just going to share with you what we're doing with our lives. You can see what's happening here in the workshop and follow along with some of the projects we've got going on. Uh, a couple of things we have happening right now in the grind room. We are working on uh, a second hog splitter and this will quickly turn into a third, third and fourth. These were cut using a plasma torch. So they need some cleanup and this is the first one that I've done and I'm not really keen on just heat treating one blade at a time. So what we've been doing is uh, making multiples of these and then we're going to heat treat them all at the same time. We're planning on cutting out at least two more hog splitters and getting them roughed in. This is A2 tool steel which is actually an air hardening steel. It's not... Um, uh, a quenchable steel so we fabricated a couple of two inch pieces of pieces of angle iron here that will sit here and then we're just basically gonna put the blade down inside blow cold air over it or just regular compressed air over it to cool it uh, the problem is is that we've moved the kiln upstairs onto the loft so we need to be able to move a hot piece of steel down to here where we'll probably set it up right in this area here. So I'm thinking some sort of safe way of doing that. We need to come up with a safe way. The other thing we have going on is <clears throat> new lighting system here in the, in the studio. This is uh, a piece of what they call uni strut, I think. And uni strut is made for electrical conduits where they run different things inside of them anyhow i've kind of rigged it up with a pulley system and put a six foot soft box light there and made a, a kind of a cool way to move like this whole thing can slide up and down and go you know back and forth so that when we're in here working we can actually get, get light where we need it the unfortunate part is the light that I'm using to drive it is only 80 watts and it just isn't bright enough. Dexter, will you plug this in so you can see that? It's only 80 watts, so when you turn it on, it doesn't give a ton of light. It's, it's a nice light, but I ordered on Amazon a 200 watt version of this, the, the light driver that's up inside of there. I've got a 200 watt version of it. Uh, I ordered it last week and it was supposed to be here last week. And then every day now I get delayed notifications because of the, uh, the situation we're in with the coronavirus and the uh, Amazon, I guess, just isn't shipping things. So not a big deal. We have other lights we can use. In fact, uh, this setup here is kind of nice. These are soft boxes. They're driven again with 80 watts. Uh, we turn those on and then this gives us a really nice uh, light system. But anyway, that's the morning update. We're going to continue on and uh, yeah, let's do this. Hog splitters, Dexter. Once you're done with the coffee, let's work on the hog splitter. All right. So I was thinking that we would um, use the plasma cutter and cut out two more hog splitters. But I'm thinking that uh, we should do it outside. Yes, because it got very smoky last night. It got night. very smoky last night, which is the reason why I think my allergies are very uh, inflamed. I have like sinus thing going on. Me too. Yeah, so I think we have an extension cord that will run our plasma out front. I know we have enough air hose mm -hmm. that we can just take it right out front and... Uh, and cut these hog splitters out and then we got a ton of grinding to do <laughs> yeah right so Lots. at this point it would be kind of nice if we had another revolution yeah and we could both be grinding that would be nice It'd be very nice maybe we need to build another one <laughs> another one i don't yeah. think you need another yeah one. we actually built one for a friend that's got a uh a motor mount uh, for a for a motor that would sit flat on the back and this will be sh shipping out to him very soon 
And uh, man, this is probably my best work so far, actually, which I think is it's a lot nicer than yours. It is a lot nicer than mine. <laughs> you know, the se the second or third one you build is uh, always better than the first one, but uh, it is it is beautiful. Turned out really nice, and uh, I am really super stoked about sending this out to him. He's gonna love having this. And uh, I did a couple of cool things with the hardware on this one. This is all the 3 8 inch knobs, but I went to McMaster car and I got the right size uh, shaft uh, studs on these, these knobs so that you don't have a ton of extra like on these over here. They're, they're really super long and uh, I need to swap these out. But uh, yeah, it's nice and clean. The wheels are from TR Maker in Turkey. The tracking wheel here is from Origin Blade, and I'll put a link to the, the one I bought from them on eBay. I was actually thinking about um, building my own version of this, and uh, during the process of kind of digging into this thing, I realized that my way of doing it with the single hull here for the tracking mechanism is not superior, especially in this particular case when I'm sending this out and I don't have access to the motor, so I can't really tune this meaning I can't really figure out the, the way that this sits perfectly on this arm. So, you know, Origin in their wisdom has put the slots down inside here that allow you to have two bolts and you can move this back and forth, which allows for a lot more adjustability than just a single hole. So I definitely think that this is superior. I would like to try my hand at actually making my own. Uh, something that uh, is similar to this, but uh, I would then just need to buy the aluminum tr uh, tracking wheel and not the whole uh, assembly, which can get really expensive. Although, at, I think it's like 60 bucks or something I pay for these, which seems super reasonable enough, I think, with the aluminum wheel and all the hardware. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, this one turned out really nice. I'm really excited to send it out. And right now, we would send it today, but we're working on, we've got all the pieces cut for the, 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 the work rest. So we need to get that finished and then it'll be boxed up and shipped out. So, yeah. All right, so grab that A2 tool steel and bring it out here. We're gonna set it up to do the tracing for the plasma. This is my uh, little storage area here for my So the way we designed this hog splitter is for this piece of steel that we've got, we got a bunch of these, two of these will fit on it. Ah, there it is. Back up. So this we got super cheap. We got Ten pieces of this shipped to us for a hundred bucks. You know what, Dex? Let's take advantage of this uh, lighting system we've got and let's roll the big work table out into the center of the room and put it up, put it up underneath the, uh, the big light there and then we'll, we'll set it up so that we can do our thing. I'll help you.
I'd say that's a success. Huh? We got two cut out in just a couple of minutes. And uh, now we're just gonna knock the slag and stuff off of them. But yeah, turned out pretty good. I feel a little bit safer about doing it out here too. And there's definitely not as much smoke and dust. Making short work of these, huh? Mm-hmm. So would you rather be in school right now or doing this? Nope. <laughs> Is that even a question? I know, I know. I gotta ask though. Yeah, these are looking nice. All right, I'm going inside. This is loud. Okay. Also, we're going to take this opportunity to empty the water bucket. The grind bucket. It's super gross. The water's not too dirty. Grind pile in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Has anybody ever made a knife out of this? So our friends over at Klingspore sent us a bunch of new abrasives to test out, which is pretty cool. And uh, this is, what'd you say this was, Dex? 36. 36. No, that's not 36, that's 100, I think. This is 36. That's a 36? And then this is 60, 100. Those are the surface conditioning belts? Yeah. Scotch brakes. And then this is 100, 220 actually. Look at the color of this thing. She's a beaut. Mm. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Ready? That's the best medicine right there. Yeah, man. Good We're stuff. not getting coronavirus now. Cheers. To coronavirus. Oh, <laughs> stop it.
buddy of mine, Steve, dropped off some mangrove. I've never worked with mangrove before, but I heard it's super strong, similar to ironwood. And they're long enough, well, at least two sets here for handle on the hog splitter. It's nice. What are you looking at? Watching Alex from Outdoors oh, 55. Alex. He's got his Q&A going. Cool. You want to get the, uh, at least bevels put on a couple of these? Yeah. We probably won't heat treat today, but. Yeah, it's pretty late. Yeah. But we can uh, get the bevels in them and then heat treat tomorrow. <laughs> grinding. That's a lot of bevels. You ready to call it a day or what? Yeah, oh, yeah, me too. So we got all the blades profiled and beveled. This one we've already done the holes. We did that yesterday. But tomorrow we'll come back and we will drill the holes, hit it with a surface belt, like a scotch bright, maybe some 100 grit, and then heat treat. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. I hope you like the format. It's uh, quick and dirty this week maybe for the next few weeks, but we'll see. All right, I hope you're all safe and happy and healthy, and we appreciate you watching. My name is Brian House. This is Dexter House. And this has been Housework. Housework.